What if I told you that the world is about to change in ways we can't even imagine? Quantum computers are real, and they could be the most powerful, dangerous and unpredictable technology we've ever seen. You've probably heard of them, but do you know how close they are to impacting our lives? You don't need to be a scientist to understand the huge changes they could bring. Let's dive into the quantum world and see what's coming next. Alright, Marvel's Ant-Man may get some physics wrong, but it's right about one thing. The smaller things get, the stranger the laws of physics become. Quantum computers may look odd, like a mix between a chandelier and a squid, but that's because we're not used to seeing computers this way. In fact, the first ever computer, the Antikythera mechanism, was discovered in the Mediterranean Sea. Dating back to ancient Greece, it predicted celestial movements, even solar eclipses, just like we do today. While the quantum computer may seem strange, it's just the next step in the long evolution of calculating machines. The basics of classical computing. Modern computers, as we know them, are defined by bits. A bit is the smallest unit of data that a computer can process and store. Bits are the building blocks of every piece of digital information you have ever experienced. A bit always exists in one of two states, kind of like a switch. This is why we say that computers speak a binary language. The state of each bit is typically represented by either a 1 or a 0, but it can also be represented by on or off, up or down, left or right as long as each bit is holding one of two potential values. This is binary computing. The physical manifestation of a bit is called a transistor. This is like an electronic switch. And again, it can exist in one of two potential states, on and off. So, the more physical transistors you have, the more bits of information you can process at one time. While this is an oversimplification, it gets the point across. We've been constantly trying to make these transistors smaller and smaller over time so that we can fit more transistors into increasingly smaller devices. For example, this old desktop calculator from the 1960s used 250 transistors, whereas the current model iPhone has 19 billion transistors in its main processor chip alone. To accomplish this, we have reduced the size of the transistor to a width of just 3 nanometers. This is too small for the mind to truly comprehend. It's only slightly wider than a strand of human DNA, which is two and a half nanometers. It's possible that transistors could be reduced to the size of one nanometer by the end of this decade. There is a physical limitation on how small they can be, but regardless of how small you make a transistor, it is still limited by the binary nature of the bit. It can only ever be in one of two states. Enter quantum computing. This is where quantum computers come into play. Quantum computers use something called qubits instead of regular bits. Regular bits are either a one or a zero, but qubits can be both at the same time. This means they can hold a lot more information. Qubits work by spinning tiny particles, like protons or electrons, in different directions, up, down, left or right. Because of the strange rules of quantum physics, these particles can spin in multiple ways at once, which makes them much more powerful than regular bits. Here's what that looks like if you put two bits together. We know that each bit will represent either a 1 or a 0, so regardless of the combination, you have two bits of information. But when you put two qubits together, you end up with the equivalent of four bits of information. This is because there are now four possible combinations of 1 and 0, since each qubit has the potential to be both values at the same time. So instead of just being 1 and 0, the pair could also be 0 and 1, 1 and 1, or 0 and 0, all at the same time. Schrodinger's cat and superposition. If this is starting to sound familiar, then that's probably because you're already a quantum physicist, or you've heard about a thought experiment called Schrodinger's cat. The basic explanation of Schrodinger's idea is that you could take a cat and put it in a box, then place something else in the box that could potentially kill the cat like a cup of poison. Then, you seal the box again. No one actually put a cat in a box with poison. At least not that we know of. Now as long as there is no way for us on the outside to know what happened inside the box, we have no evidence to suggest that the cat is dead or alive. Maybe it drank the poison. Maybe it didn't. My cat eats plastic but refuses to eat chicken. 
Cats are unpredictable creatures, and as long as we have no observable method to predict the fate of the cat, it may be considered simultaneously both dead and alive at the same time. This is referred to in quantum physics as a superposition, a state in which our qubits can reside. They are two potential outcomes occurring simultaneously. The trick here is that the moment you open the box and check on the well-being of the cat, that superposition collapses back into a binary. The cat will either be dead or alive. The same applies to qubits. They eventually have to pick a side and resolve as either a one or a zero. But that time spent in superposition allows the quantum computer to explore a vast network of potential combinations before arriving at a final answer. This superposition is where the quantum computer gets its power. When you start adding up all the potential values from the superpositions of multiple qubits working together, you begin to get some pretty huge numbers. Remember when we said that two qubits could store four possible values, making them equivalent to four standard bits? Well, combining just 20 qubits together will produce more than one million potential values. The largest quantum computer that exists today, that we know of, was built by IBM and has over 1,000 qubits of processing power. In one decade from now, IBM expects that to increase to 100,000 qubits. The challenges ahead. Now, what does that mean for you and me? The first thing we should establish is that quantum computers are not just a better version of our existing computers. They are less of an evolution and more like an alternative mode of transportation. Quantum computers can take us to places we have never been before, in the same way that your boat can take you places your car can't drive. But a boat is not an improvement on a car, nor is it a substitute. So, quantum computing will not replace 99% of the jobs that are currently done by existing supercomputers, and you definitely won't be adding one to your existing lineup of personal tech. The simplest reason for this is that in order for a quantum chip full of qubits to actually function, it needs to be held at a temperature as close to absolute zero as physically possible. This is as cold as cold can be, colder than the vacuum of space. So, in order to even operate a quantum computer, you first need to obtain the world's most powerful freezer. Oh, and even with the necessary cooling system, existing quantum computers can only operate for around one second at a time before the qubits lose their superposition state. The second problem is a bit more difficult to understand, but simply put, quantum computers can actually make mistakes, which is kind of strange since we're used to computers being error-free. Right now, their error rates are anywhere from 1 in 100 to 1 in 1000. For them to be really useful, the error rate needs to drop to about 1 in 1 million. This happens because qubits are unstable, and the more you use them, the more likely errors become. Even with this issue, quantum computers can still solve problems in seconds that would take regular computers thousands of years. Now, is this a big problem? Well, Apple's already taking it seriously. In February 2024, they upgraded iMessage with security that can't be cracked by quantum computers, but not all online services are as safe. Things like emails, bank accounts, cloud storage, and even crypto wallets are still vulnerable to quantum attacks. One big problem right now is that the US is falling behind in the race for quantum supremacy. China is currently ahead with the most powerful and stable quantum computers. In 2020, the US committed $1 billion a year to quantum computing, but by 2022, China was spending $15 billion annually. So, is there anything we can do about it? Not much, really. But it's worth keeping an eye on which services are upgrading to stronger encryption. If you're worried, you might want to switch to more secure options. On the bright side, quantum computers could do amazing things, like solving problems that current computers can't even dream of. They might even help us create a better future, one that we usually only see in science fiction. Our regular computers just can't understand the world the way quantum machines might be able to. Computers have always had trouble understanding complex things like biology and weather, for example, we still can't cure cancer because we don't fully understand it. Even though scientists mapped the human genome 20 years ago with supercomputers, we're still not making huge breakthroughs in medicine. A big part of the problem is that things like diseases and viruses work at the quantum level, where particles can exist in different states at the same time. 
It's like Schrodinger's cat, you don't know the truth until you look. So, what does all this mean for us? Quantum computers could totally change the way we do everything, from healthcare to science and even how we understand the world. We're on the verge of something huge and while there's still a lot to figure out, the possibilities are pretty exciting. What do you think? Are we ready for this new tech? Or are there risks we haven't thought about yet? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and if you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. See you next time.